It's New Year's, 2023. Happy New Year's, everybody. This is a chance for us to kind of wipe the slate clean and start the new year with our best foot forward. And I can't think of a better way to do that than by dragging home a bunch of crusty junk. Right, pup? Right. Well, I had a weak moment, or a good day, depending on your perspective, at a local estate sale, liquidation sale. Uh, long story short, my brother bought a dump truck from a guy, and it turned out that he had bought the assets of a defunct construction company, and he was liquidating all of the equipment, which was mostly a bunch of junk, including this junk. So I picked up this Miller Blue Star 2E portable welder. No idea if it runs. Side panel was off. I think all the pieces are there. There's a thermal dynamics pack 100 plasma cutter. I don't know anything about it other than it's currently set up for three phase. So if we're going to use that, we're going to have to hope that it can be converted. And then this thing here is a Powcon welder, I guess. I've never heard of this brand before. It's supposedly made in the USA. So there's a power supply here. And then this is a wire feeder for MIG welding. It appears to be able to do stick welding and MIG welding. So it must be constant current and constant voltage. Don't know. I do know that this machine powers on. I don't know if it welds. We're going to find out. Uh, the bad news is all these machines have stickers indicating that they belong to somebody else. Somebody who was not the construction company I bought them from. But the good news is there's so much dust on them. I think we're past the statute of limitations. So I think we're good to go. Let's see if we can get that guy to run. Would appear to be a cast iron block Tecumseh single cylinder engine. It has some oil in it. It has no gas in it, which might be a good sign. Let's put some in. What's the worst that could happen? Okay. Doesn't look too scuzzy in there. Might have a chance. All right, let's see. Turn the gas on. I guess let's hook up some, some juice to it and see what she does. No battery. That's no surprise. Two red cables. That one appears to be the ground. Smell gas. Ignition on. Here we go. Sound too great. Something's pulling it down, maybe. Well, let's do the usual stuff. See if we got spark, fuel, you know. Ooh, pretty black, which would indicate that she's burning some oil, but you never know. So let's see if we've got any sparkage here. 
Yes, sir, we do have a spark. Okay. Well, get some fuel in this thing, it might run. I guess it doesn't have points. Give it a little sniff of ether and just see if it'll it'll cough to life here. Okie dokie. So it will run. We're gonna have to fix that carburetor, I think. Well, let's be honest. There's a zero percent chance. This carburetor is just gonna work. So we might as well get it off there and clean it. Max, go open the door, pup. Let some of this carbon monoxide out. Looks like some kind of an impulse fuel pump. That probably doesn't work, because they never do. Good thing I bought this old bench. So we got a nice clean place to work on this carburetor. Looks like JB Weld on the on the elbow there. It's never a good sign. Hey, that looks pretty good. And the float's not stuck. At least it doesn't appear to be. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna put that back together. We're gonna pray that it doesn't leak. I'll bet you that fuel pump is the problem. All right, carbs back on. I took the fuel pump off and just put a regular nipple on there. So we're just gravity feed from the tank, which should work, I think. Let's try it. Nothing. Got fuel in the carburetor. Yeehaw. Okay, so we still have to clean the carburetor because it only runs with the choke on, but it does run. I don't know. I've done the best I can. This is pretty cheesy, this Walboro carburetor. You can't remove the emulsion tube, at least as far as I can tell, not without destroying it. I don't like that. 
What are you going to do if we, if we destroy it? We're, we're down for good. I don't think you can get parts for these things anymore. So we'd be trying to find a, a used carburetor. Oh, the float height looks a little bit low to me. It's working though. Hopefully that gasket holds up. It's one nice thing about the ultrasonic cleaner. It's pretty easy on rubber components. You could dunk it in the old school carburetor cleaner and that thing would be swelled up like a... Well, like, never mind. I believe it was about one turn out. That one was about one and a half. Let's try it. Fuel? Is that the problem? Yeah, that's our problem. I think. It's just barely trickling out of there. Alright, we're going to try it from the temporary tank here. See what she does. Spilled gas everywhere. Let's try to weld something. Just see what happens. We're a little crude. Well, that'll work for now. Switch that way down. that somewhere and The engine runs, seems to run pretty decent. The high idle's not working, but that's not a big concern right now. The big concern is that we have no output. 
There's no DC on the welder. There's no AC on the 110 volt. This thing is stone dead, which is not good. Uh, but it's kind of good because it gives us a direction. I mean, these are super, super simple machines. If the generator turns, there should be some kind of an output. And the fact that we have nothing leads me to believe that we either have a problem with the slip rings or more likely we're not getting excitation. So uh, the best way I can think of to explain it is if you think about a generator, it's the opposite of an electric motor. So in an electric motor, we have magnets that pass near each other. And depending on their polarity, they're either attracted to or repelled by each other. And usually the way that we make those magnets is by using electric fields. So they're electromagnets. And in a motor, it's no problem to create those fields because we have power, electricity all the time. In a generator, we don't have electricity to create the magnets. So there's two ways we can get around that. We can make one of the magnets a permanent magnet, like what you stick on your refrigerator, and the other one an electromagnet. And we pass those in front of each other and we generate electric current. But the more common way to do it is to use excitation. So they actually use power from the battery, the battery that starts the engine, to create a weak electrical or magnetic field in one side. And then essentially that jump starts the generating process. And once it starts to create its own power, it can create its own magnetism. If you don't have that excitation, the chain reaction can never start and the thing's just completely dead. So that's where we're gonna head first. Here's the wiring diagram. The nice thing about Miller is they have really good diagrams and they're right in the owner's manual and all the manuals are free to download off their website. So there's the 12 volt battery. There's a switch, that's probably the ignition switch. So anytime that switch is on, power should go from the battery through this D8 diode and into the slip rings. That is the excitation circuit for the generator. And then once the generator starts generating, the diode here protects the battery from being overcharged by the higher voltage of the generator. Super simple. Now I have seen on some older machines, they don't have this excitation circuit. Instead, they rely on residual magnetism. So essentially they're relying on the iron in the generator to hold, hold magnetism after the power goes out. And if you let them sit for too long, that magnetism decays to zero and there's not enough there to get the thing started. So usually they have a procedure for how to remagnetize some part of the generator. Usually you have to hook up a battery to it or something like that. Sort of a similar problem to what happens with magnetos. So in magneto ignition, it's all done with permanent magnets. And over time, those magnets, the magnetism decays and there are special machines you can use to remagnetize them. Same with permanent magnet servo motors, you know, the, the magnets, they don't stay the same strength forever. They had to be remagnetized. Anyway, we're gonna check this circuit first. I think that's gonna be part of our problem. So I'm no expert, but I'm pretty sure Miller didn't use yellow wire nuts anywhere inside their welders. What the heck's going on with that? Also, this resistor's gotten super hot. That wire's melted, that wire's melted. That's not a good sign. I don't know what this is all about. Somebody's put a marker on there, one. And four. How much you want to bet those two wires originally connected together? I bet they did. All right, so let's see if we got juice on either one of them. Ignition on. Nothing. Yeah, that one's got 12 volts. That's on the ignition switch. Okay. 
I think I see the problem. So we are missing... Max, your head is right in the way. <laughs> Over here, maybe? This diode, D8, is missing between 1 and 4. 1 and 4. So that's our problem. We're missing a diode. I wonder what size that is or what spec it is. If we can find out, I might be able to buy one. Get this guy up and running. I wonder if we can just kind of cheat that. Well, according to the manual, D8 is a 3 amp, 1000 volt diode in line with the harness. I don't have any 3 amp diodes, but I do have some 10 ampers. So let's strip this back. Like so, I'll hook up a jumper. So that's number one. And that should go to that end of the diode. And we'll hook up our other jumper here. And that should go to number four. Okay, let's try it out. Cool, we got 110 volts, still won't weld. I think it's because the idle is too low. All right, we're gonna set the idle. The idle, the power idle, and the weld idle, if that makes sense. I think the reason it's not giving us much weld output is that the RPMs are just way too low. At least I hope so. So we'll put a little piece of photo tape here on the on the guard. And I've got a photo tack. There's a procedure in the manual on how to adjust the, the various idles. You have to follow this exactly. I've gotten in trouble with this before on Miller welders. I had one one time. It was set up a little bit differently than this. And I believe on that one, the solenoid pulled it down to idle. And what would happen is it would come down to idle and then it would just immediately go back right up to, to weld RPM. And I thought the solenoid was bad or the control board was bad. I was chasing my tail, pulling my hair out. And it turned out the problem was the idle speed screw on the carburetor was just a little bit too high. It pulled down, but the RPMs were still a little too high and it immediately kicked it back up. So if I would have followed the procedure, I would have figured it out right away. Well, shucks. I feel like we're getting closer, but we're, we're definitely not there yet. Uh, we just don't have enough output. And I think that's probably because we don't have enough input. So that I think there's still just not enough excitation voltage or current 
to generate enough output. So I think we've got the 12 volt excitation to get it started, but it doesn't seem like it's taken over. So this winding here is supposed to power the field, excite the field through this bridge rectifier here. I'm suspicious about this resistor right here. It's obviously gotten hot, very hot. So I'm gonna check it real quick. That is part of the uh, part of the circuit that excites the field. And I think I have a suspicion. Yeah, it's completely burned out. Well, I think it's burned out. So I don't know what's going on here. I mean, that lead's gotten super, super hot. And somebody's crimped on a new, a new end to it, and it's melted as well. So yeah, that resistor is open. <sighs> What's that? That's just a ground. So I don't know. Well, I wonder if that I wonder if that thing contacted that resistor and that's what caused the problem. Because that's a right. Yeah, this is a ground wire for the uh, for the chassis of the machine. I bet that's it. I bet that that thing shorted to that thing and smoked it. Uh, just to be sure, we're, I'm gonna check, I think this capacitor is probably bad, it's, it's leaking. And I'm gonna check this re, this rectifier as well. I gotta poke around here and see if I've got something that would approximate that, that resistor. I bet I do. Well, according to the manual, this is a 12 ohm, 180 watt wire wound resistor. And believe it or not, I have one that's pretty pretty similar in spec. This is a 20 ohm. It's gotta be more watts than that. We could probably make it work, but I was thinking, looks like the damage is only on, kinda on that end. I wonder if the other end of the resistor is still good. Nothing there. Three mega ohms. Five ohms. So let's just try this. Let's just move this down. It's like about the same spot, doesn't it? Let's see if we can polish that up a little bit. Okay. Seven ohms. gonna try it. So plug that in there. Plug that in there. Why wouldn't that work? Let's give it a shot. Still just not quite there. So we're gonna try my my resistor and see if it helps things. So it seems to put out 110 volt okay, I mean enough to power a grinder, but it still just won't really weld. And I noticed when I was adjusting the fine adjustment on the panel, there were some, some arcs and sparks and some nasty stuff going on inside. So I pulled the, pulled the hood off, I think I see the problem. So it didn't just burn up that resistor, it also burned up the rheostat. So that's all.
kind of melted. There's the brush has fallen out of the little contact arm. So that's not gonna work. I'm gonna try to just put it over on 100% and we'll see if we can get some output out of it. I mean, if the thing works, I don't mind spending some money on parts, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna sink a bunch of time and money into it if it's just a boat anchor. So that should be locked on full chotch now, 100%. We'll see what she does. Finally, it welds. That is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I figured out I had the leads for the resistor hooked up wrong. Once I switched those around, she took right off. So that's excellent. That means that, well, we know the engine is good and now we know that the generator is good. We just have uh, some minor problems. We need a rheostat, a resistor, a diode, a battery, a fuel pump, maybe an air filter, probably that capacitor, and we'll have ourselves a decent little welder, do a little bit of rewiring. Yeah, that's great. All right, well, I'm gonna snoop around and see what kind of parts I can find. Hopefully there's something available. Man, I'm glad we figured that out. I was about, about out of options. All right, it runs, it welds, it generates. It's a little rough around the edges, but should fit in just fine around here. I ordered the parts. Surprisingly, everything was available except for that big oil filled capacitor. So we'll have to find something, some kind of replacement for that. I don't know what it's gonna be, or maybe we'll just leave it. Anyway, I'm out of time. We'll have to come back to the Blue Star for the dramatic conclusion in part two. Thanks for watching.